Hi guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the new flagship to MSI's Z87 gaming range. This is the GD65. As you can see from the styling point of view, it is very similar to the Z77 gaming range which they introduced a couple of months ago. So it's got that uh, black and that red theme with the Dragon which is now synonymous to the gaming range. Now with this board being Z87, it's designed with Haswell in mind. It's got you know the fourth generation support. And with it being gaming, it's got the gaming characteristics. So just to run you through some of those before we go into the video. We've got the Killer E2200, uh, which works in conjunction with the Gigabit LAN port. So that's going to help you with your latency in games, bringing your ping down and helping you with that. We've also got Audio Boost, which has uh, got a chip underneath it. That works again with, in conjunction with the Audio Jacks, giving you higher quality audio for the games and also for music and movies. Now it's also got the multi GPU support so we've got the support there for Nvidia SLI, we've got support for AMD Crossfire so you know if you're going to go for a configuration which has more than one GPU then this board will be ideal for that. Now with this new wave of Z87 boards from MSI we've got military class 4 making an appearance so that basically means that the components that are used on the board are going to be a lot more robust. They are designed for durability, stability, and for extreme conditions. So with that overview now complete, we're going to take you on an unbox, and then we're going to show you exactly what these features are on the new GD65. Okay guys, to start with, we'll do an unbox. Here we've got the GD65 gaming box. You can see we've got a um, slightly different finish on it. I don't know if you can pick that up on the video, uh, but uh, they've, they've kind of gone with a different material that they've used uh, from a typical sort of box. Uh, we've got double reinforced cardboard here. So perhaps if you order from a store and um, it arrives via a courier, it's got a better chance of arriving with you in a decent condition. Now we've got various boards knocking about um, and you can see that with the standard type of box, it does seem to uh, to bend and um, it, can, it can tear quite easily. So, you know, very small sort of thing, but I do like the, the finish and just the quality of the box itself. So here you can see we've got all the logos which you would typically expect um, from the gaming standard. It's recommended by Fnatic, uh, that's the gaming, the sponsored gaming team, uh, which are um, endorsed by MSI. We've got the Killer E2200, uh, which comes with this board, and we've also got the Z87 chipset and it's going to be for Intel Haswell which is fourth generation CPUs. So we'll just spin this over and we'll just uh, go over uh, some of the features. As you can see, a uh, typical sort of thing that you would expect on a box. Uh, the fundamental features are giving a bit of a, a, a rundown. You can see here we've got the audio boost, that's quite a big feature with this. Uh, it gives you amplification for your headphones. Uh, we've got the E uh, the Killer E2200 which is making an appearance uh, and that's obviously going to help you with uh, lag and things like that, um, diverting game traffic and uh, lowering the latency for you when you're in your games because uh, you're obviously there are things that go on in the background. We've got the OC Genie 4 which is uh, number 4 obviously, generation 4, this is the fourth installment of this feature so you uh, can boost to an OC um, profile straight away you know a couple of seconds and then we've got the other features multi GPU uh, the sound is, is via sound blaster again that's going to be something that's uh, fundamental to this board military class 4 components which um, we've seen on previous boards uh, the military class is a rugged robust uh, feature set that's going to give you better quality better endurance um, for overclocks and overall life. We've got the gaming ports, the PS2 and the USB. Uh, we're going to take a look at all this stuff as we go in, so we're not going to mention too much. As On this first clip, we really want to get inside the box and see what it's all about. So here you can see we've got the board itself in an anti-static bag. And that comes in a nice little tray like that. I'll just put that to the side for the moment. Right, the first thing, we've got um, the driver CD, which comes with the utilities as well. 
we've got the badge which you can stick on uh, you know, your, your case, um, your desk or whatever. Nice little badge. Now then, we've got a, a door holder. Uh, this well hanger. It just hangs on your doorknob outside, and you uh, you know if you want to crack on with some games, let people know that you don't want to be disturbed. Quick installation guide, which uh, gives you a few tips uh, to getting up and running. We've got the user guide, which is a bit more detail. It's also got multiple languages in there. We've got the software and application user guide. Now this is uh, coming with various different types of software, so we've got a bit more detail in terms of the actual software itself. And then we come to the components and the various little items here. We've got four, a total of four SATA free 6G cables for your hard disk drive storage. We've got the rear I.O. shield for your case. We've got a flexible SLI bridge if you've got a multi uh, GPU configuration. Oh, and we've got the uh, the quick connect uh, for your pins. You know your power, your reset, uh, LEDs, not on your case. So that's quite a handy thing to have. And we've also got the uh, the voltage check cables. As this obviously this board is a bit more high end, it's got uh, some of the voltage uh, reader ports on there so you can use your multimeter if you're wanting to go for that. So with that unbox complete now we're going to go and take a look, a good look at the GD65 Gaming. Okay and here we have the motherboard itself. As you can see the GD65 Gaming is very reminiscent of the previous generation with the Z77 Gaming line. It comes there furnished with that black and red theme and it has that dragon which epitomizes the gaming range. Now black is a particular colour which will coordinate very well with other types of hardware. Okay, we're now going to move in for a closer look at all the aspects of GD65. And we'll start by taking a look at the socket area. Now over here we've got a 12 phase power design. And just behind those heat sinks we've also got the 8 pin power. And both those things are going to give you a bit more juice in terms of your overclocking capabilities. Now this board in particular comes with the military class 4 components and um, we're going to cover that in a bit more detail over on the, uh, the review article on Vortez.net so uh, just for now we'll give you a brief overview just to whet your appetite for it. Um, basically these, uh, these military class 4 components they bring you a higher quality solution so uh, it's better preparation for extreme conditions. So we've got high C caps, super ferrite chokes, and we've also got the uh, the solid caps, and we've also got dark caps which are making an appearance. Now these come with, uh, the, the dark caps in particular come with a 10 year lifespan, which is a really nice selling point with this board. So as I've said, basically uh, the military class 4 brings in uh, more of a robust solution and it ensures stability for extreme conditions. So it removes any limitations that you might have. So then, socket is, um, if I just take this cover off, that is the LGA 1150. That's gonna be supporting the fourth generation of Intel chips, that's codenamed Haswell. Now the, the mounting holes, which are just around the socket here, they are exactly the same as 1155, so if you do have a CPU cooler which is 1155, then it will fit here no problem. Just make sure that the CPU is 1150. Now we've got passive cooling over those MOSFETs, just behind the, uh, the, the CPU, and you can see that there is a single copper heat pipe which flows through there. Now one particular aspect which I do really like about this motherboard is the fact that over um, just behind the uh, the memory there we've got two CPU cooler fan headers so your air coolers nowadays they come with dual fans moving on to the memory slots here we've got the dual channel DDR3 support we've got up to 64 gig here and we can also drop in 3200 so you've got the capacity there for the 64 gig and you've also got the frequency up to 3200 so everything is covered there that's really nice to see 
And on the edge of the board, we've got the V checkpoints. So if you've perhaps got a multimeter, you want to get direct access to the voltages, um, perhaps for advanced users, then that is a really nice feature to have. And next to the 24 pin, we've got that multi BIOS switch. So we can drop between different BIOS. Perhaps you've got problems with a particular BIOS booting up, um, perhaps overclocking too much. Then you can switch between that and you can even uh, drop in, update the BIOS and uh, tweak settings. So that's a really nice handy feature to have to help you uh, in any trouble. Directly next to the hard disk drive storage ports, we've got the USB 3 header. That is going to connect right to the front of your case, giving you USB 3 ports. So that's nice to see that we've got the native support there for that. Now in terms of hard disk drive storage, we've got a total of eight ports and all of those are SATA free, so that's 6G. So they've done away with the SATA 2. Of course, SATA 3 is backwards compatible. So if, if you've got a drive that's perhaps SATA 2, then it will work and there's no problem at all. It'll just uh, have the speed capped. Now in times past, we've had um, half of the ports on, on previous boards uh, where we've got the Marvel controller delivering the power and then we've got the Intel controller for the rest of them. But the six of the eight ports on here are governed by Intel Z87 and the other two are via AS Media. So we've got many of them controlled by Intel, which is a good thing to see. Now, if you're going to use the M SATA port, which is above the PCI Express, then the SATA 6 port on the, on the panel will be redundant. Okay, next we move to the PCI Express arrangement. And here we've got uh, numerous amounts of slots here. We've got three PCI Express 3.0 X16 slots. And then we've got four PCI Express 2.0 X1 slots. Now the support here for both the NVIDIA and the AMD uh, dual card configurations. If you're gonna go with NVIDIA, then it's two-way SLI. And then if you go with AMD, we've got the three-way Crossfire. Now the top slot, the PCI Express 3.0 slot that is, uh, that's going to operate at 16 speed. And then the middle one, 8, and then the bottom is 4. So if you go with SLI, then it is going to drop to 8 speed. And then with the crossfire, all, all the uh, free slots used, then it will drop down to 4. So basically it's whatever the lowest is, then that uses that as the maximum. Now next to this we have the large heatsink which covers the Intel Z87 chip and it has that dragon motif which is synonymous to the gaming edition motherboards. Along the edge of the board we've got a variety of different features which we're going to run through now and starting on the far right we've got that LED debug. Now this is a very handy thing to have on your board as it allows you to diagnose problems uh, without having to through trial and error swap things out. So for example, if you have memory problems and you can't get past post and into Windows, then all you need to do is look at the panel and go to your user manual and you'll see exactly what the problem is. It'll say a certain code and you'll be able to find out exactly that perhaps it is the memory that's at fault and you can swap the kit out and you know replace it without having to go through uh, various different strategies, replacing uh, the memory, the graphics card, the CPU, uh, you know, all sorts of things like that. So that is a very handy thing to have on your board. Next up is go to BIOS, which is a little button. You just press that and on the next boot up, you go straight into the BIOS. So you don't have to uh, remember to press your Dell button. Um, so again, it's a very efficient way of, of getting into the BIOS without having to miss that. Uh, especially for us reviewers and uh, perhaps overclockers, sometimes you can get waylaid and uh, you know you miss the BIOS every time and you have to reboot and, and then press your Dell button so the go to BIOS is a, a very efficient way and a very handy feature to have again. Now next to this we've got the OC Genie button now this is OC Genie 4 so it's in its fourth installment and um, my MSI have given a little uh, a switch at the side and that allows you to switch between the OC Genie mode and gaming mode. So with the OC Genie mode, we get around 14% overclock performance. And then with the gaming mode, we get around 20%. So it gives you a little bit extra. Uh, but anyway, you can go into the BIOS and you can actually tweak the profiles there. 
uh, to what setting you want. So perhaps if you want um, like a 4.5 overclock when you hit that button, then you can go in there, tweak that in the BIOS and set that against a profile. And then the other buttons which are beside this are the standard power and reset. Again, those are fundamental really for system builders, perhaps guys that have got uh, stuff on test benches like us reviewers. Uh, it is a very handy thing to have. You don't need to connect your case uh, up to the front panel pins or anything like that. So power and reset, again, very handy thing to have. Now, audio boost is a key feature on GD65. Here we have the cover, which has a chip underneath, ALC1150, and we have the respective audio capacitors. Now, this uses an amplifier, which is OPA1652. That's going to give you, uh, and it's going to deliver studio quality audio, and it even has the EMI shield too. Now, the audio jacks are gold plated to encourage better signal. Okay, finally then, we're gonna take a look at the rear I.O. As you can see from left to right, we have the PS2 keyboard and mouse. We've got two USB 2 ports. Those are gonna work in conjunction with the gamer profiles. Next up, we've got the clear CMOS button, in case you get into any trouble. Next, the audio jacks, and we've got the SPDIF digital and the analog. And now, with Haswell using integrated graphics, we've got the uh, various displays, the outputs, we've got the VGA, we've got DVI, and we've got HDMI. So you've got a uh, free selection uh, of uh, different outputs you can use, and that's up to 1080p. Now we've got Gigabit LAN via the RJ45 port there, and that's going to work in conjunction with the Killer E2200. Again, you get that software on the CD, and you can tweak various settings. Uh, in short, though, that's going to give you uh, better latency in games, helps to channel traffic away from uh, your gaming environment so that you do get that better ping. Now, we've got uh, a total of, on the rear I.O., we've got four USB free ports, and then we've got those audio jacks, which give you surround sound via six channels. So that completes our look at the Z87 GD65 Gaming. Now at the Z77 launch, you may recall that we actually took a look at the GD65 and we really loved it. And this new Z87 variant builds on the success of that board. You know, it's kind of built for endurance, it's built for overclocking, especially with those military class 4 components. Now the things that we do like about this board are <laughs> very, very numerous. You've got the, uh, the boundaries pushed in terms of the memory specification, the support there for up to 64 gigabyte of DDR3 and also 3200. So, you know, you've got the capacity covered and you've got the frequency. And again, on the similar sort of plane, hard disk drive storage is, is again generous. You've got the eight ports and they're all SATA free compliant. We also like the absence of the PCI slots since, you know, they're pretty much redundant nowadays. No one uses PCI devices. The BIOS is also a really nice touch. The way that they've designed it, it's easy to navigate, it's appealing to the eye, and uh, you know it's very easy to use. And we haven't even mentioned the styling on this board. We really like what MSI have actually done, uh, but we're actually interested to know what you guys think of it. Drop a comment below, you know, tell us what you feel. Tell us whether you like it, whether you hate it. We'd be interested to see what you actually think of it. Now, if you're looking for the performance and perhaps some other details that aren't covered in this video, jump over to Vortez.net, we'll drop that link in the description. And thanks for watching guys, and if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button, and I'll see you soon.